Hi, PPL. Thank you very much for joining my class. I could not be happier that you are here. Super excited. Uh, as I said, when we had our first class, I'm going to make our class as efficient as possible. And in order to do that, what I did is to create a classroom for us to work. How does this work? I'm going to send you an invitation. In this case, I created a profile, a student profile that I'm going to use that, that would be you in this case, yeah? So I'm going to send you, first of all, an invitation. Uh, you are going to be teacher Lau's student. You are, and I'm going to send you an invitation which you're going to receive in your Gmail account here. See, here you have it. Once you click on your email, you're going to see the join button. That's all you need to do, join. In this case, I have more than one Gmail account, so it's requesting me which Gmail account I wanna use. So I just click the right one and I'm going to click on join again. And it's going to uh, take me straight, straight to the classroom. There you go. As you can see, I have my account set in English, but if you have it set in a different language, all this is going to be in your own language. Still, you're going to find everything in the same place, in the same screen spot, so don't worry about it. As you can see, first thing, it takes us to the stream tab, in which you're going to see any announcement I might make for us. In this case, for example, the first as, as a announcement is that I already assigned you the first homework. It could be anything else. I could be posting, hey, next, next class, we're going to join from a different link, or we're going to Zoom Skype instead, or I don't know, whatever I need to uh, announce is going to be here. It's going to come here always, the newest uh, um, announcement on top. And then here on the side, you will see all the homework you have left, you have to do. Order by due date. What we do now is to click on classwork. There you go. And you will see all the assignments according to categories. In this case, I only created the grammar category because I assigned you a grammar exercise. If you click here, first, first of all, you see that everything is in purple, but because the theme I chose is also purple, yeah? If this is a different color, you're going to see a different color. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that you see a color. This is because it's new. If it's new, it's colored. We click here and we, and we can have a quick preview of the assignment, right? Then we can click on view assignment and it's actually going to open it. There you go. There you go. These are all the pop-ups the pop you're going to get because it, it, it is only if it's your first class. Oh my gosh, am I, can I speak today or not? <laughs> so once you click on the assignment, then you can see all the instructions I'm giving you here. Mostly are going to be kind of the same thing, but you might have a few more if it's something different. You will also see what we are going to see in this, in this presentation per se. And then you will see the presentation I shared with you. What happens with this presentation is that you will not be able to edit it because that's my presentation that I created that would be the original document. You need to create your own copy, which you will be able to do. So no worries about it. You click on the presentation and it's going to open on the application slides, the Google application slide. This is still my presentation. You click on file, make a copy, entire presentation. I would advise you to rename your presentation. Just get rid of that copy of unnecessary and change the NU that stand for new unit, you change it for your own name. In this case, your account is student, so I'm going to add that. Since this is going to be saved in your own Google Drive, my advice also is to create your own folder where you keep all our homework. So for example, you go to my drive, 
and create a new folder. Mm, let's call it English with Teacher Now. Click on the tick and then select. And this is where everything is going to go then. You click OK. Here we, are, we have our own copy. This is the one you can actually edit. And the other important thing to take into account is to share this presentation with me. So if you share it with me, I will be able to do modifications as well. If, we, if I need to make any corrections, if I need to add any comments, um, to explain you something that I can write right here. So you click on share. I'm usually going to give you in the assignment the email address you need to share it with, but most likely it's going to be also, also if you want, hola teacher loud. That's me. Got it. Make sure you give me editor access. This one is not necessary. And then you click on share. There you go. Now you can write, I can write. In many cases, you might have already instructions in the slides. For example, here, I may, you might have instead of this, you might have, okay, in the next, um, in the next text, read it and answer the following question. I don't know. It could be a typical exercise. But this is only grammar. In this grammar exercise, you have the grammar explanation for present simple. You go through it, slide one, slide two. You take your notes if you want. If you're going to use a notebook, you take as many notes as you want. If you have questions, you write them down so you can ask them in class. Once you finish all your theory, it's your turn to actually practice. How do you do it? It's very simple. First thing I would advise you to do, especially in your first presentation, is to change one key setting. So go into Tools, Preferences. First, I would get rid of is automatically capitalized words because capital, capital letters in English matter, especially if you're going to prepare yourself for a test. Make sure that you only capitalize the words that need capital letters, like names, countries, etc. Otherwise, everything else goes in lower cases. Then we're going to click on Use Custom Out of It Preferences. This is because otherwise it's going to create bigger boxes that are not going to fit our uh, blanks in the slide and it's going to drive you crazy. Like, Make sure that we set it to do not out of it, do not out of it, and click OK. And this is going to be your default setting for, for all your slides uh, moving forward. Once you did that, you click on the text box here, and you create your box here, for example. What you can also do that will make life easier for you or more comfortable, I know it does to me <laughs> as well, is to click on align and set it to center from, from top to bottom. Yeah. Once you click on center, you can start writing already. Let's pretend that's the right answer. Sometimes some slides already have the boxes ready for you to make life easier. I already did that for you. So you just double click on it and then you write your answer here. Once you've, once you've done all of the exercises, all of the slides, you can go and check yourself if how well you did. In the last slide, you will have all the answers, like in this case. But what? They are upside down. So what next? It's as easy as you can think of. You just right click, you click on rotate and flip vertically. And as you can see, here you have the, the answers. You can copy them, control C, and for example, bring them here to check that what you completed here was actually correct. If the answer is correct, B is, let's say, um, make funny. In this case, if the answer is correct, you do nothing left. You, there's nothing left to do. But let's pretend you said makes bees, it's plural, and you wrote makes 
which would be for actually singular. And this is wrong. You see here that this is wrong. So what you do, you can leave them in red. This will give me a clear idea of your level of understanding on the topic. If you make many mistakes, I might create more exercises for you to practice, or we might actually discuss the theory together in class. If you have very little mistakes, very few mistakes, and maybe you were distracted, or maybe it was just a confusion, or you did them quickly, or whatever, if you don't have many mistakes, then it, it tells me that we can actually move on. Once you did everything, this is almost the end, but we still have one more step. You finished all your exercises, you corrected yourself, you know your answers, and now you need to let me know that you did your homework. How do you do that? You go back to the classroom, right here where you have your assignments, that's where we opened the assignment from, you click on Add or Create. You click on Google Drive, which is where you're going to have saved your own presentation. And as you can see, you, here you will have two presentations. The one I actually shared with you and yours, the one you copied. So you're not sure, as you can see, which one is which. You can do this, you change the view, and then you know the one that is called student that is the one you actually need to insert for me click on insert and then as it shows it here the pop-up shows us here you click on turn in are you sure you submitted this attachment yes turn in and there you go Let's imagine, for some reason, you picked the wrong assignment. You can unsubmit as well. But if you have to make any changes on the slide because, oh, this, is, this was, um, I had the wrong answer here. I'm going to correct it. You don't need to unsubmit. You just correct it on the slide. And as you can see, if you go back to your class, to the classwork, it is going to be grayed out. It's no longer in color. And this is it. This is how we do it. Now I know I will receive an email on my account saying that you completed your homework and I can check it out and be ready for our next class. Easy peasy, right? So I hope this is easy enough for you and it's going to be as efficient as I promised. If you have any questions or comments, you can always send me a message and I will be happy to assist you in any way possible. Thank you very much and I will see you in class. Thank you. Bye.